right, guys, your next comic on the stage makes some noise for Adam Weatherford. Hello, uh, everybody feeling good? Good? Cool. Uh, so last year my wife and I were at a funeral, and um, we're far back, and she stifles a giggle, which, you know, funerals are so sad that sometimes a giggle just happens for no reason. And then she nudges me, she points down to the grave in front of us, and on the grave is the normal stuff, but also uh, a can of Sprite and a chicken wing. And I don't mean on the grave, it's etched in the grave. There is a can of Sprite and a buffalo, I'm assuming a buffalo wing, because it's hard to etch sauce. And they didn't put the word buffalo on it like they did with the Sprite, because then people would be like, that's a terrible buffalo, it doesn't even have legs. <laughs> but anywho, like, I, I just got, I didn't laugh, because I got to thinking, like, was that in his will? Was he like, did he go to a lawyer and a notary and pay for that? Or like, when he died, people were like, hey, you know, Ronnie's gone, and I think I know what we gotta do. We gotta all chip in a little bit. We gotta get him on, you know, Sprite and chicken wings, yeah. I mean, I know he choked, but still, I mean, it's still symbolic. It's, it's, if he'd had more Sprite, the wings wouldn't have been a problem, you know? And it's just, you know, and we just gotta, we gotta team up, guys. We gotta team up, you know? And uh, we gotta make sure we don't go to a funeral home that only has Pepsi products, because he hated Sierra Mist. He just hated, if there was Sierra, he wouldn't go. Anywho, I work at a, well, First, I'm going to tell you my degree. I, I went to school for six years. I took like half a semester off. I went abroad. I got two degrees in film and video studies and technical writing. And the Starbucks I work at is really nice. Uh, it's really nice. It's an interstate one, but it's really fancy. The bathrooms are always clean. I should know. I do a lot of that. And uh, my other job is drive through you know? I'm on the drive. Because I have a good drive voice. I'm a little a little uh, dry right now, but people pull up and like, hey, welcome to Front of Road Starbucks. My name's Adam. How can I take your order today? <laughs> Caramel macchiato ice, nice. Venti grande? Grande. Extra shot? No? Okay. They pull up. I've been complimented on it. My manager says, I've got a really good drive through voice, and she puts me on drive through all the time, but now I'm terrified because I've been like an artistic person my whole life, and I'm worried that I finally found my life's calling. <laughs> <laughs> Can I try again? <laughs> like, what, what if I'm the best drive through person in the world? What if I like do it for 30 years and like they put me at like the Starbucks nearest to the White House, you know? <laughs> the Alpha Team. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Uh, a friend of mine, they were a friend, and then they got promoted, and now I'm a little worried. Because not only did they get promoted, they also started reading Sun Tzu's The Art of War. So I don't know what I'm in for. The Art of War. Uh, is a 2,000 year old or 2,000 year old Chinese war manual. It's like the basis of all military thought for like the next 2,000 years. People treat it like you know a really good text. Problem is, it's 2,000 years old, so it's war without like helicopters or airplanes or radios. <laughs> I bet all the knowledge is like really basic stuff now. Like, hey, you know what you should do? Attack when your enemy is not ready. <laughs> you'll have the advantage because you're ready and they're not. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, that's awesome. Now it's like standard. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm bad at some things. I'm bad. But I think, I think we all got to admit our badness. I think the human race as a whole, I'm getting a little big here, probably a C minus as a species. And I'm being a little generous because granted we had the Renaissance, but we also had Nazis, and that just throws a curve off. <laughs> you know, I mean. It's terrible, and like, we're only doing so well because there isn't like an alien race throwing the curve off, you know? Doing really well. Imagine if we found aliens that had race but no racism. We'd be screwed. <laughs> like if there's a planet of like orange flurbs and blue flurbs and they never hurt each other. You know, you check, of course. Like we get a bunch of blue flurbs together. It's like, hey, did you guys ever like just try to kill all the orange flurbs? Okay, no, and then neither did we. We didn't do that either. Um, how about like make them work for you for free? No? Okay, what about like steal all their, re no, you didn't steal any resources? Did you need to stop them from voting? No, we, no, um, you had to have like stolen some traditional orange flirt music and then just watered it down and claimed it as your own and then like just think like I'm so cool for making this for like 50 years. You, did, you didn't even do that, okay. 
the only way we'd survive as a species is we'd all have to forget about racism. So, like, I'm like, sorry, Darius, we gotta pr just pretend like you're white. You know, just pretend racism doesn't happen. You know, or at least pay it lip service and then think, like, I wonder if they have onion rings here. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, that's my time. I need to go Have a good one. And welcome, everybody.